Throughout the history, energy has always been synonymous with development. From the discovery of fossil fuels, we had access to huge amounts of energy. This disturbed the balance. The amount of greenhouse gases we emit into the atmosphere is unsustainable. This dead end has led us to the need to find new sources of energy, and thanks to the current technological leap, we can transform the sun, the water, the wind into electricity. Stopping consuming fossil fuels to supply one of the major energy demands, such as transportation, has become a key goal for the energy transition. So we have decided to embrace the electric vehicle strategically. Is this the change we need? The main charging point for an electric vehicle should be our homes, because here we can charge it during the night at a reasonable tariff. Moreover, it's so practical because as soon as we get home, we can plug it in and the next morning we will have the vehicle at full battery. The network of recharging stations is complemented by a public or private network located almost everywhere. We can find recharging points promoted by the city council or electric companies and at shopping malls, gas stations and cinemas or even at work for instance. In Europe, the main strategies has been subsidizing the purchase of electric vehicles and investing in a powerful charging network. In pioneering countries such as Norway, which plays a trail, 90% of recent purchases of new vehicles were electric. These are countries where it seems obvious that gas vehicles will be soon updated. Also, we have the European regulatory framework, so from 2035 it will no longer be possible to sell gas vehicles, while some countries, like Norway, are adopting the van earlier, on 2030. The first barrier has been the industry itself. In the end, the electric vehicle is a great disruption and the industry was not ready. In addition, there is a classic chicken and egg dilemma. You are not buying an electric vehicle if you don't have a point to charge it, and if there are not electric vehicles, you will not invest in a network to charge them. Speaking of regulations, a company or a user could not set up a charging point and sell energy directly to the vehicles, and this slowed down the development of the network. Another issue was something crucial about the electricity market in Spain. It is very expensive to have contract power. Having a 50 kilowatt point costs 5,000 euros per year just because you had the charging point, even if it had no consumption. For electric mobility, it would have been much better, a cheaper contract power and a higher variable cost of the energy. The operator would have a cost only if it sells, but having a very high fixed term came out very costly. Finally, another problem is the scarcity of materials, which affects not only electric mobility, but also the entire planet. As new countries are joining consumerism, and our finite world cannot supply everyone, I think we should move to a degrowth model of society with a more rational use of goods. That is why it's so important to share electric mobility and to focus on the circular economy. This one uh, is a, just a simple wall box and normally it's with a very low uh, power. This charger, for example, it's very strongly recommended when you live in a alone flat or in a house. And you connect directly from your installation from your house to the charger. It's very simple, very fast. Another type of charger is this one. This is the public charges of semi-fast uh, power. It's strongly recommended for the cities, especially for the city centers, also for restaurants, sports zones, whatever. Uh, these charges uh, you spend uh, two, four hours to full, uh, fill, fill the battery of your electric, uh, electric car. This is a public semi-fast charger. In the outside of the charger, we can difference to similar parts, the circuit A and the circuit B. 
in the inside part of the charges, we can find the entry of the current, also the protection zone composed by uh, residual protection uh, breakers and also the circuit breakers and here the control and measurement uh, equipment here with a counter and a measurement. Also we have the electronic board where we have a modem to connect the charges outside. These are charges with, uh, from 50 kilowatts to 350 kilowatts of power. Uh, those charges are ultra fast or fast charges. Of course, are bigger than those charges, uh, but of course, the uh, technology are also more important. Uh, also, the price, of course. The first way is just to connect on the, your meter, your own meter from your company, your electric distributor. Uh, those installations that you take a new wire from your own counter, normally it's very easy installation. Of course, it's uh, without, it's a simple installation, it's very easy. The problem with that uh, type of installations is what happens if you live, for example, in a flat where you aren't the owner. Or in another case, for example, you live in your counter, sorry, is inside of your house. You have to take another cable and to go down to the to the packing area. That's a problem. Okay, another possibility could be to uh, contract a new counter with your electric company. Okay, that's a solution and could be very simply also. But the problem sometimes is you know the different uh, papers that you have to make with the company. Sometimes could be a little trouble, a little problem. The third one, and is uh, most strongly recommended by a technic, is to make a new installation uh, in the community area of the parking owners. That's uh, strongly recommended because then the different cores of your installation, you can divide uh, between the different owners of the installations. And also you can implement a new solution, for example, the payment with an application, a mobile application, or another very interesting solution. In the end, the bottom line is that we are moving from private ownership to pay for use. You don't buy something, you just rent it. With vehicles, we have already seen the first step. Many people have gone from shopping to renting, and several contracts are now only two or four years long. There are even monthly subscriptions, rentals of one or two months. We are in a transition period that will end with a pay-for-use system. This has many pros. It is very efficient from the point of view of the circular economy because the manufacturer of the vehicle is interested in lasting it as long as possible and with little maintenance. Instead of producing, consuming and throwing away vehicles, we produce, rent and extend its life. So with fewer vehicles, more people can be served. The best moment for charging an electric vehicle is during the night and when there is a surplus of energy and it's cheaper. On the other hand, in the case of an expensive energy scenario, because there is a peak of consumption, electric vehicles may stop charging and feed the stored electricity back into the grid. Therefore, electric vehicles are excellent energy aggregators to balance supply and demand. The future will be a hybridization. Most people will have a car park to charge their vehicle every day. When they need to charge it on the road, they will have to pay a higher price, yes, but they will be able to do it since the electric network on the road is growing every day.